Hello, everyone. My name is Maria Larsen. I'm a PhD student at the University of Tokyo. And today I will present our journal track technical paper, which is a result of a collaboration between a group of computer graphics researchers in Japan and wood engineering researchers in Sweden. Synthetically generated solid wood textures, they have developed to a standard where they are nearly indistinguishable from real wood. But one important feature is missing. Can you guess what it is? I suppose the title of our paper already gave it away, but I'm talking about knots. These darker spots in the wood texture that cause intricate distortions to the annular ring patterns. There is no previous method to efficiently model their volumetric structure. And therefore, we developed a texturing framework for solid wood with knots. It is a procedural model, meaning that the colors are produced by a series of mathematical operations. So the volume data is never stored. Instead, each pixel is recalculated at every frame. Our system stores just a small size input data that controls the wood colors and geometry of the internal skeleton. And the output image is computed almost instantly. In this presentation, I will first introduce the background about what causes knots and what has been achieved by previous works. Then I will show how we efficiently model knots, followed by a presentation of rendered images. And finally, I will conclude the presentation with a summary and thoughts about future works. Knots are caused by branches that grows out from the stem of a tree, which causes these internal deformations inside the wood. Knots are particularly common to softwoods, such as pine and spruce, because these trees tend to have a long, thick stem with many small branches. But knots also exist in hardwoods, like oak. And they appear on surfaces of unpainted wood in our environment, such as structural building members and furniture. Procedural texturing is an efficient technique to create volumetric textures with high natural variation. Previous research have proposed functions for reproducing a number of wood features, including pores, rays, and light reflections that depend on the fiber directions. But these works are limited to wood from a single stranded stem. They cannot handle multi stranded internal skeletons, such as knots and splits. There are a few attempts to create knotted wood textures by distribution of particles in a 2D texture and learn 2D to 3D texture synthesis. However, these works they treat knots as distributed circular spots and they do not consider the underlying three-dimensional geometry of the wood. So they cannot reproduce these volumetric effects of cutting the wood in different directions. Other works have successfully applied the level set method to three-dimensionally model the annual growth of more complex and multi-stranded geometries. However, the level set method is a growth model that expands over many time steps. So if you're interested in a piece of wood that is cut out here, for example, you would still need to calculate all the previous states to know the points that you're interested in, which are only the visible points on the exterior surface of the model that you're rendering. And therefore, the level set method is inefficient for surface texturing. Before going into the method, let me specify the problem. What exactly are we trying to model? This is a detailed photo of a knot that is cut along its skeleton. And a knot always starts growing from the pith, the central core of the tree. And it grows out in a more or less pronounced curvature while causing distortions to this rounding stem green. And here, something interesting happens. The branch dies. And then it stops expanding in thickness. And it is no longer intergrown with the stem grain. But the knot is still present as an obstacle for the stem grain to grow around. So the challenge here is, given some input skeleton, we want to model these stem-to-knot transitions, where the knot is intergrown or not intergrown, 
depending on when it is alive or dead. And we want to do so with direct evaluation at any point. Let me illustrate the key idea of our method. We represent the annual ring pattern as the distance to a center point divided by the local speed of growth, resulting in a scalar field that represents the time of added growth within the tree. Then the annual rings can be implicitly defined as isocurves of this field. And now we have something that looks like the cut through stem of a tree. The advantage of this representation is that it makes it very easy to perform unions between multiple geometries. If we define two time fields and overlap them, there is a very simple way to join them by taking the minimum value out of the two fields. However, the transition between the geometries is sharp. To make a more natural transition, we use the smooth minimum, which can be calculated at any point independently without knowledge of surrounding points. Specifically, we use the power smooth function here. And the parameter k, it can be adjusted to control the strength of the smoothing. So to summarize the key idea of our method, it is to use a time field representation and smooth minimums. And now let me show more precisely how we use these techniques to model knots. First, let me share an overview of the full procedure. So given an internal skeleton and an input 3D model that is cut out somewhere within this tree geometry, we first consider each skeleton strand separately and calculate time fields around them by the distance to the nearest point on the strand divided by the speed of growth in that direction. Knots have a more dense time field compared to the stem because they grow relatively slower. And then we combine the fields by smooth minimum operations. And finally, we map wood colors to the field while additionally darkening the knots, resulting in the final rendered image. And now I will show this process of combining the fields in more detail. So taking the time fields of the stem and the knot, or branch, that's why there is a B, and joining them with a smooth minimum naturally creates the appearance of an alive knot that is intergrown with the stem and whose thickness increases over time. And now, if you're happy with the shape of this union, and you don't bother to model dead knots, you can stop here and do a batch smooth minimum between all the knots and the stem and with a constant k value. However, we want to make some adjustments both for alive and dead knots. For an alive knot, we find that the edge of the knot here is a little bit too undefined. So we want to change the shape of the smoothing. So to do so, we adapt the k-value to different points within the field, creating a tighter edge around the knot without decreasing the overall distortion effect. And next, we want to model dead knots because it is a common feature and because it adds a richer variety to the texture in terms of knot size and deformation type. So to model a dead knot, we filter the area after a knot dies and recreate the appearance in two steps. In step one, we modify the knot time field by gradually decreasing it after the point of death to counteract the natural increase in thickness. In the second step, we gradually scale down the amount of smoothing to mimic the decreased distortion effects around the dead knot. And this is the result. And of course, knots might die at different points in time, or not at all for that matter, resulting in different thicknesses in the final texture. 
The knot on the left here died at an earlier point in time, and the knot on the right here died at the later point in time. As for implementation details, our procedure texture is implemented as a shader program using OpenGL. And the procedure itself, it happens in a fragment shader, which is calculated on the GPU as a standard for any procedural texturing model. And now let me show some results. This is a pine wood plank, which is based on this input skeleton, which in turn is extracted from CT scans of a real tree log. So the rendering is actually based on real data and should thus have a realistic distribution of knots. Here we aim to recreate the appearance in this reference photo. To create this pattern, we searched within the previously shown pine tree to find a good cutout location that exhibits the same pattern. Here we try to recreate another reference photo of a knot with a butterfly distortion pattern, which is caused by non-uniform deformation in the vertical and horizontal axis. To create this pattern, we vary the amount of smoothing with the angle around the knot axis. This is an example of cross-laminated timber, which is a common modern building material consisting of wood planks that are glued together at alternating directions. We make this texture by using exactly the same procedure. We just modify the 3D texture coordinates of the input model by offset and rotation to achieve a tiling effect. Plywood is another material which often has a lot of knots, but which is not solid wood, but a product of solid wood. This video shows how plywood is manufactured by rotational cutting of a tree log to produce sheets, which are then glued together to create the board. We recreate this texture by again using exactly the same procedure. We just modify the input texture coordinates by unrolling them in a corresponding manner to how plywood is manufactured. This texture exhibits a repetition, which occurs in real plywood as well. It is a result of the rotational cutting. After cutting a full rotation, you come back to the same location again, so you get a similar pattern, but not exactly the same because you're cutting at a slightly deeper level. Finally, we did an expert evaluation with 10 participants who were academics or professionals in wood engineering. We asked them to rate and comment on the plausibility of the annual ring patterns in a number of rendered images as shown here. Some of the comments that we received were that the transition from alive to dead knot is very realistic. Another expert commented that the butterfly distortion is usually messier and have more irregularities. In summary, we propose a procedural model for solid wood with knots. The method is based on a time field representation and smooth minimums. And we model both alive and dead knots. We could reproduce various naturally occurring knot patterns. And our model is computationally efficient, both in terms of time and memory. As for limitations and future works, our results are rather clean looking and we focus on modeling the annual ring pattern specifically. For more realism, we could add more noise and also other more detailed wood features, such as cracks, rays, and pores. We do not provide a reflectance model at this moment. As with any procedural model, it can be difficult to control by adjusting the parameters, especially for a novice user. So in the future, it would be nice to have an interface for more intuitive design of knotted wood textures. Along the same line, another topic for future work is to automatically infer the procedural parameters and the internal skeleton based on a reference photo. And this is the end of this presentation. For more materials, please visit our project website, where you can find a link to the source code, as well as a link to a simplified shader toy implementation that you can instantly try out.
Thank you.